just introduce you the next presentation. So Jeremy from uh, Sopra and uh, and Pauline from Sopra will present their uh, their sustainable uh, pass with their customer Euromaster during the challenge. So hi Jeremy, hi Pauline. Hi. Hi everybody. Hi, sound is perfect. So if you want to share some slide, please do that and. Yes, definitely. Okay. okay. We see your screen. All right. All right, it should be, it should work. Yep. Just all right, perfect. So we don't have me, we see your screen, including not. Maybe you can uh, yeah. remove it. Like this one, it's better? Mm. Yes, it's better. All right. Thank you. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeremy, and I'm with Pauline. Uh, we are coming from Sopra Staria, and we want to use this 20 minute talk to, to discuss with you, to share with you our vision of the a path to the industrialization of sustainable IT. And uh, we will have, in order to, to do this, uh, this talk, um, some uh, return on um, experience, uh, especially one with Euromaster that we are really happy to share with you. Um, one important thing about sustainable IT is that it's, uh, it's uh, an innovative topic. And as any innovative topic, we need uh, a test and learn process. Um, so, uh, in a simple, put in a simple way, we have these three main steps, uh, project farming, uh, impact measurement, and search for optimization. And uh, these three steps need to be done and done uh, to, to, to test and, and learn progressively. And the idea is to progressively to go until the industrialization as much as, as possible. So these three steps, we will uh, we will share it uh, on two experiences, uh, and we start right away with uh, first one uh, that we we had during the API days uh, with Euromaster. Yes, we are going to describe you how we became aware of the urgent need to include the sustainable IT in our professional life. Uh, this subject had interested us for a long time uh, before the API Days Challenge, but it was a real opportunity to apply uh, everything that we were going to, to learn. So uh, we're going to explain you the application uh, that we use for the API Days uh, Challenge. Um, it's an application created by Euromaster uh, for their customer to take an appointment um, if we can make a comparison, we can take like Dr. Lib, uh, and it's a uh, Dr. Lib, but for, for car. Um, so there is three principal features, um, in the, in the customer journey, uh, it's to choose your service, service or services, uh, choose the, the center, um, uh, you can, uh, enter a localization or geolocalize your, yourself. And then you can choose your channel and finalize with uh, your personal information and car information. So there is five, five steps uh, into your car plate. Uh, you will see after it's a very important um, information. Uh, the, choose the services, select the center, the slots, and then you enter your personal information, car information, and then you check and confirm your appointment. So uh, at the end uh, of the last uh, year, uh, Euromaster asked uh, Soprasteria, which were, has been uh, responsible of the maintenance of the application, to uh, revisit and rethink the customer journey. Uh, they want to uh, rejuvenate uh, all the customer journey and the, and the page. So it was a real opportunity for us um, to include the dimension of the sustainability. 
Um, so when we announced the participation for the API Day Challenge, uh, we used this project with all the team to rethink uh, its less uh, energy uh, energy cons uh, consumer and to apply the best practices that we were going to learn. So this challenge uh, came at the right time for us last year. Um, so, uh, during the challenge uh, and for the project, the first step um, it was to make an inventory of uh, our impact uh, environment footprint. Um, so, um, the first step was to measure uh, with a tool uh, that is EcoIndex. So, it permits us to, um, to analyze all the environment performance uh, concerning uh, water, uh, greenhouse gas, gas uh, request the size and the dump. So, um, it was very important for us, for us to have uh, some starting uh, uh, aim uh, to, make, uh, to, to make some um, a strategy just after that you will see. So it's it was very nice for us to for us to um, uh, have a way to situate our impact and to become aware and aware and then make some targets uh, for the efforts to be made. So we will explain you with Jeremy uh, our axis of optimization as we um, as we see during the workshops of the challenge. Um, there is three axes, three principal axes, uh, functional arch architecture and coding. So um, we're going to explain you concerning the interface and the user experience. The principal aim was to uh, make the maximum value for the minimum resources. And so an example of this, uh, of this uh, maximum value from a minimum of resources that we, we could do on this project was to suppress some steps when it was not uh, necessary, when we already have the information about, for example, uh, the localization or about the, the car plate and so on. Uh, we could step some uh, some um, step, uh, we could uh, pass some step and this would permit to avoid to have some screen shared and so on and, and to limit uh, at maximum the, the impact of, uh, of this journey. Then the second point was to respond to essential need rather than a maximum of need. So that was a, a second important point that we that we learned. Um, an example of how we, we uh, included uh, in our project was to, for example, to minimize the number of center or, or the number of slots available that we display. Uh, for example, if you if you want to if you search for a center around you you don't need to have like 50 center shown you you need uh, something like uh, three or four uh, closest center around you and if you want more you can ask for more but we we don't need to 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 share uh, too much information too quick just the just the essential uh, information and the last principal point was to maximize terminal's lifetime for us. That's uh, another really important point, as we know that uh, the terminal impact is really important. And a, a good way to, to maximize this terminal's lifetime was to um, enlarge the number of uh, devices that are compatible with, our, with the platform, uh, with the service. Uh, and, and to make sure that it's working on the, the most uh, number of devices uh, possible. Then we're going to talk about the coding policy. Uh, we used Ecometer, another tool to, um, to count the good eco design practices and to find some way to uh, reduce the environmental footprint of our application. So uh, we have this just three points. Uh, the data gradually loaded, like uh, Jeremy was talking about just before. Um, then uh, the cache management, and uh, we have reduced the weight of uh, images, and we have limited the weight of the image sent by the centers. 
after we're going to talk just a little because I'm not an expert, but I'm going to tell you what we do for the architecture. Um, we have separate the front end and the back end uh, with Angular uh, to send all the data of the customer journey just at the end. So if a customer stopped the customer journey after the last uh, step, uh, there is uh, less energy used for the for this uh, customer journey. And the next point is very important. Uh, it's concerning the cloud ready and the elastic architecture. The cloud uh, we have made this application cloud ready. Uh, the Euromaster uh, doesn't uh, do this for the time for for this time. But for in the future, we really hope that they are going to. To, to do this uh, because it's the, the most uh, nice solution uh, for the environment footprint of the application. In, in this case, yeah. Yeah, in this case, of course. So in conclusion, um, as we can see, uh, we managed to reduce our impact on four uh, out of five indicators. So we were we were happy uh, of that. Uh, we can see that the DOM uh, in, increased, but uh, the it's about the construction of the page. But in the four uh, steps just before, uh, in water, it's not even an Olympic swimming pool, and for the <laughs> the gas, uh, uh, it's it's a return trip uh, from Paris to Portugal. But that's a <laughs> good beginning. Um, we did not save significant impact, uh, but we did not increase our impact. Uh, as you can read, uh, all the page uh, increased a lot um, concerning their weight, but for, for us, uh, it's a real success because the, our impact didn't increase and the app is ready for the elastic architecture. And we hope in the future uh, it will be the most positive transformation uh, for the application. And um, we were happy because, uh, as you can see, uh, we have uh, been rewarded, like uh, with the Soprasteria uh, Award uh, on the on the left. And uh, we were happy because uh, our involvement and the application of every knowledge acquired during the challenge was rewarded. Yeah, um, a last important point is that um, indeed we didn't decrease the impact, but uh, uh, we didn't invest any uh, dollar, especially uh, in uh, in uh, eco conception. And uh, without any dollar invested, at least we didn't uh, increase uh, the, the impact as uh, it is uh, normally the case. So at least uh, that's something uh, that's a win. So that was uh, our first experiences uh, to apply this uh, this uh, this uh, this process, uh, this iterative uh, process, and uh, we had the chance to work with an industrial uh, organization after that, and to work on two projects. Uh, the first one is a, a web uh, interface uh, in order to launch some simulation. Uh, so with a web interface, so it, it kind of uh, a similar type of technology. And the second project uh, is a common orchestrator uh, without an interface. So uh, that was a really different type of technology, really uh, kind of deep uh, in the system. Uh, so we had, uh, it was a, a nice uh, a second step, like to go further in the, in the discovery of uh, how to do eco conception in uh, another type of technology. And, um, uh, fortunately, this was uh, a dedicated sustainable IT experimentation, and uh, we had kind of a uh, dedicated budget in order to do it, uh, 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 at the contrary of uh, for the first project, for our master project, I mean. So, again, about the, the measurement phase, uh, we had for the first project, the one with the, the web interface, we could use EcoIndex. Uh, because the index is, uh, is useful for web interface and API interface. Uh, but it was not uh, useful for the second one, for the second project, because as I said, there were no 
interface. Uh, so we had to find another way to do this measurement. Uh, so we we use um, uh, another method that is a life cycle analysis. Uh, so we didn't do it like completely, like uh, like if it was a, a dedicated uh, um, mission about life cycle analysis. Um, but we we develop a method uh, inspired by this uh, this um, measurement. And um, so what we learn, uh, so a, an important element about life cycle analysis is that it permits you to, to measure for any equipment, uh, the impact uh, during the fabrication, the, the, construct, the, yeah, the fabrication of the, of the equipment and the use of the equipment. And this gives you uh, some impact, uh, different type of uh, impact, uh, water, uh, greenhouse uh, uh, gas, but also uh, excavation of uh, material and uh, primary energy, for example. And we could add all this if, uh, uh, if necessary. So our findings uh, was first that we had the same result, more or less, uh, between Equindex and the, the life cycle analysis measurement. So that was uh, interesting for uh, challenging uh, the Equindex, understanding it, uh, but also to make sure that our uh, life cycle analysis was kind of adapted for this, uh, this first try. Uh, another finding is that Equindex is really quick, really, uh, easy to use, but it's limited. Uh, and the life cycle analy analysis is more time consuming, but uh, it's really necessary in order to do analysis. Uh, one of the elements, for example, is that you can have, uh, you can measure the impact per functionality. You can measure the impact per user journey step and to know where uh, come from the impact. And as you have multi criteria of impact, you can make sure that if you change if you make some change to reduce some impact of a criteria, you don't do a, a, a transfer of impact in another, uh, another criteria. But quickly, our challenges, was, was uh, the two main challenges was to gather down some data. <clears throat> uh, when you are in a project to have uh, data about the equipment, for example, like the reality, the physical reality of an equipment can be really tough. Uh, because of organizational challenge or because of technical challenge or sometimes because of a confidential challenge. And the other challenge was the, to obtain some references data. So what's in the, for example, the energetic mix uh, of friends, for example. Um, this, uh, there is some data, there is a kind of lot of data, uh, not, not of data free as well, but uh, we have uh, in the ecosystem to be able to have consistency in this data. It can be a, a, a challenge to find specific data and uh, to have up-to-date data. So that was another challenge. But at least we have this, this uh, first measurement. And uh, after this measurement, we develop uh, uh, some uh, more understandable criteria that was really useful in order to raise awareness to define some uh, copyright that the team can understand. And um, uh, another finding was that uh, it's good to know the number of kilometers, uh, equivalent in kilometers of your application, but uh, it's better if you can compare it with another application to, to better situate yourself. And uh, last point about this uh, measure for awareness is uh, can we find one indicator to win them all? Uh, it's kind of the echo index uh, proposition, but um, uh, it's good for mainstream, but it can be risky if we want to avoid impact transfer. Um, still uh, on the measurement, so this was several iteration. Uh, we wanted to go deeper in the in the measurement and and to go faster to do uh, to to run industrialization. So we we work on automatization and real time monitoring, uh, monitoring not on on the performance but on the efficiency. Uh, so what is the resources for uh, a specific need? Um, so uh, it was also quite challenging. Uh, we need to find uh, links on, between monitoring and usage data. Uh, so we need to have this data. Uh, we need to maybe find in the ecosystem progressively some environmental monitoring standard. Uh, 
Um, but it will not be enough. We also need to have some uh, specific competencies to be able to 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 build on top of this standard some uh, more specific uh, indicators dedicated to, to the project. And uh, and finally, we need to make sure that the impact of our monitoring is not too high. So, in terms of uh, environmental uh, impact. Thank then you. We saw, yeah, just yep. Just uh, Nicola, we are running uh, out of time, so. Can you conclude in, let's say, in one minute? So we yeah, can. Sure. Uh, uh, sorry for that. Yeah, yeah no problem. Uh, one important thing is this uh, uh, valorization of the of the impact, uh, of like the, the minimization of the impact that you can find. Uh, so on top of this uh, table, we have the impact, and below we have all the different axes of optimization. Uh, these different axes permit you to, to think of your its estimation of the valorization. And this permits you to think of your return on this investment. Uh, it's key if you want to obtain further, uh, further investment in order to reduce the impact. Uh, and as you can see, it's not only made about the planet, but also about the people and the profit. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, and finally, in order to conclude, um, so yes. we are, yeah. No, no. Yeah, okay, go. Go <laughs> okay, so we are only on the at the start of one of the biggest challenges of the next decade for our industry. Yeah, and, and we are definitely convinced that it's uh, that solving this challenge is uh, is mandatory. And this will require a strong competition. Competition, so competition and also cooperation. Uh, this challenge will not be solved only by one actor. We need to work uh, together. And fortunately, the ecosystem is answering the call. Happy day first, but so many other candidates. Little steps can already be done without strong investment. Uh, as we could show uh, during the, the uh, the echo index uh, and echo meter tools, for example, uh, awareness is a good beginning uh, in order to start this journey. And regulation is coming and will require return on experience as to And even without regulation, we can already see a lot of claims that start to include some uh, uh, requirement about uh, sustainability. And uh, yeah, as an uh, ESM, we, we have this opportunity to act uh, as a catalyst with our client to accelerate this transition. And more than this opportunity, it's kind of a, uh, a duty, uh, I think, for, for our sector to go in this uh, direction. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy, and thank you, Pauline, for this uh, you. brilliant conclusion. Thank you. So you can unshare your screen. And uh, thanks a lot for your time and for your presentation. And